WIV and click on Detroit. Local 4 News at Noon starts now. Waiting to reopen restaurants and businesses across Michigan, hope Governor Whitmer's three-week pause will not be extended as it is set to expire. Facing protests and threats as Michigan's Secretary of State sees protests at her home. Lawmakers and election officials were the target of threats over the weekend. And the people have spoken. A federal judge throws out a lawsuit aiming to decertify Michigan's election. And that tops our new news on this very busy Monday. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Karen Drew. This morning, a federal judge rejected the suit that sought to decertify the state's election. The lawsuit was based on claims of widespread fraud in the distribution, collection, and counting of ballots. There has been no evidence of such fraud in the state, and election results were certified last month. Now, in the judge's opinion, she said, the people have spoken and the court will not ignore the will of millions of voters. We have the full ruling on ClickOnDetroit.com. All right, get ready. Governor Whitmer will be holding a coronavirus briefing at 2.30. This afternoon, we will be getting the very latest coronavirus numbers from the state, including an update on those school outbreaks. But the big question on everybody's mind, Will the three week pause that has halted indoor dining, in person learning at high schools and group fitness classes continue? The three week pause is expected to expire tomorrow, and restaurants and businesses are nervous if it does get extended. And chief medical officers representing Michigan hospitals say the three week order is working at stabilizing COVID cases and hospitalizations. They go on to say in a statement today, our hospitals continue to face critical health care worker staffing shortages and troubling bed capacity numbers. Our teams on the front lines are exhausted as the second surge continues. We never truly recovered from the first. Now data is indicating a slight decline in COVID-19 emergency department visits daily admissions and total hospitalizations. As physicians were telling you, these measures are working. They went on to urge everyone in the state to extend and take extra precautions throughout the holiday season. President Trump's personal attorney, Rudy Giuliani, has been diagnosed and hospitalized with coronavirus. Late Sunday, Giuliani tweeted that he was, quote, getting great care and feeling good, recovering quickly. No one's saying when Giuliani tested positive. However, he was in Michigan, as you know, last Wednesday for a hearing in front of the House Oversight Committee. Trump's campaign issued a statement that Giuliani had tested negative twice immediately preceding his trip to Arizona, Michigan and Georgia. Giuliani did not wear a mask during the Lansing hearing, which did last more than four hours. House Speaker Lee Chatfield says they will contact Trace. Chairwoman Laura Cox and other staffers who came in contact with him will be tested. We got some frightening moments for some elected officials over the weekend from armed protesters showing up to the home of Secretary of State to death threats for a House representative. And Dick Monticelli reports this all centers around the baseless election fraud claims. Good afternoon. These are both very serious things. The first, of course, being those protesters outside of Jocelyn Benson's home. The second, a death threat, an actual death threat called into a state representative. They say the caller said, she should be hanging by a rope. Stop this, deal. this video has gone viral, showing armed protesters gathering outside Secretary of State Jocelyn Benson's Detroit home Saturday night. She says they were shouting threats and yelling stop the steal as she was putting up Christmas decorations with her son. Attorney General Dana Nessel says the group was taunting and intimidating Benson's family, shouting conspiracy theories about the election. In a statement, the Secretary of State supports peaceful protests, but adds there is a line crossed when gatherings are done with the primary purpose of intimidation of public officials who are carrying out the oath of office they solemnly took as elected officials. Nessel and Wayne County Prosecutor Kim Worthy wrote, this disturbing behavior masquerading as protest should be called out for what it is and roundly condemned by citizens and public officials alike. Meanwhile, a threatening voicemail was left for State Representative Cynthia Johnson. She be swinging from a rope, you Democrat. You Democrat stealing the election. You deserve everything you get. Goodbye, man. You're in so much trouble. The hate message comes after the state rep's participation in the House Oversight Committee that questioned President Trump's personal attorney, Rudy Giuliani, and Melissa Carone during last week's voting hearing. Howdy, how dare you? 
who bully witnesses on the stand. Your name and phone number's out there now. You're getting dog I'm not lying. I sign it after David. <laughs> that hearing was parodied on Saturday Night Live. On Twitter, Michigan House Assistant Minority Leader Lori Pahutsky wrote, The SNL skit was amusing, I guess, but last night my caucus was trying to figure out how to keep those on that committee safe from the deluge of death threats they're receiving. I'm sorry to be a bummer, and I'm glad people enjoyed the skit, but the reality of it is heinous. And many people have wondered what will happen in either of these cases. The protesters, probably nothing legally there. It's not illegal to gather in front of somebody's home. The death threat, though, that, of course, will be a criminal charge. I'm Nick Monticelli, Local 4. Governor Whitmer has been named as a committee co-chair for President-elect Joe Biden's inauguration. The co-chairs will help guide the planning of the January 20th event. Governor Whitmer says she's humbled to be part of the committee and says the inauguration will exemplify the strength and resilience that the country has demonstrated in the past year. Meantime, President-elect Joe Biden has announced his nominations and appointments to his administration's health team. President-elect Biden has nominated California Attorney General Xavier Becerra to be his Health and Human Services Secretary, Dr. Vivek Murthy to be Surgeon General, and Dr. Anthony Fauci to be Chief Medical Advisor to the President on COVID-19. Separately, Biden picked a Harvard infectious disease expert, Dr. Rochelle Walensky, to head the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Right now, fast food workers across Detroit are striking. They are demanding employers such as McDonald's pay a minimum of $15 an hour. Cooks and cashiers from across the city, along with local clergy, are expected to circle a McDonald's on Van Dyke Avenue and then honk their horns and chant from their cars. They are also calling on Congress and President-elect Joe Biden to raise the minimum wage in his first 100 days. Time now to get the check of the weather. Let's send it over to Paul Gross, who is in our weather center. Hey, Paul. Well, hey there, Karen. We have a lot of cloud cover out there, and you see this is a live shot here from our Mount Clemens sky cam. Plenty of gray out there, plenty of it to go around, but you know what? Uh, it's a pretty much a dry day. This is really not a bad winter day. Sure, we need the sunshine, but we will also take decent dry roads. Uh, temperatures right around freezing right now. It's just been a very slow rise in temperature just with this cloud cover and the cool air mass overhead. Visible satellite image actually shows there are some breaks developing from Saginaw down across the central part of the state, but uh, those right now are not making it into our area. So right now we're banking on a lot of cloud cover and just maybe the chance for a break or two this afternoon. Uh, temperatures just rising into the mid 30s for a high. The wind at least remaining relatively light, so wind chill not a problem. We don't have any real weather impact problems for the rest of the work week, but this coming weekend, things will change in, in a big way. We'll talk about that and the big warm-up coming our way in just a few minutes, Karen. All right, always appreciate it. Thank you, Paul. Still ahead this noon, all eyes are glued to the UK today as people in the country are set to receive the first doses of the coronavirus vaccine.